whenever you have some kind of a list in front of you, finding the middle element feels very fundamental, right? Let us say you have an array of length n, then the middle element will be at n by 2, right? If you have a string that has the length l, then you can find the middle element by knowing l divided by 2, correct? But what about a linked list? In a linked list, you do not know the length of your list, right? It is just next pointers. So how do you find the middle element? There is a problem on lead code, middle of a linked list, that actually explores this. Let us see how we can solve it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we will see the most naive way how you can find the middle of a linked list, see why is it ineffective and then we will find an efficient way to come up with a solution. After that, we will also do a dry run of the code so you can actually see how all of this works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us quickly make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. So you are given a linked list and you have to find the middle node. And if there are two middle nodes, you need to return the second one. What does this actually mean? Let us understand it with our sample test cases. For a test case number one, you can see that I have a linked list that has five nodes, correct? Now, if you look at it, what will be the middle element? If you notice, this 15 is the middle element, right? Because on the right you have two nodes and on the left also you have two nodes, correct? So in this test case, you need to return this node as your answer, right? This is your middle node, correct? But what happens when you look at test case number two? In a test case number two, you have a total of six nodes, right? So if you try to determine the middle point, this middle point will lie somewhere over here, right? Because on the right you have three nodes and on the left you again have three nodes, correct? So this is the scenario where you have two middle nodes, either 15 or 16. So which one do you have to return? You have to return me the second node. So for a test case number two, you need to return 16 as your answer. So now if you feel comfortable with what actually does the middle of a linked list mean, feel free to try the problem once again on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Okay, so let us suppose I have my original list with me. This has five elements, right? But you do not know. When you are starting a linked list, you just have the head pointer, correct? Now you have to determine how do I go ahead to determine that, okay, this is my middle node. So what is the first approach that comes to your mind? The most basic approach that can come to your mind is, okay, I will traverse the entire linked list and calculate how many elements do I have. So I travel one, two, three, four, five. I have five elements. So the middle of the linked list would be five divided by two. That will be the third element, right? Because you are rounding up. So now what you can do is go back at the head again and go on to the third node. As soon as you reach the third node, you can say that, okay, this is my middle element. And yes, that is correct. But do you see the problem with this approach? The problem over here is that if your linked list is very huge, then you always have to do two iterations to come at the middle node. In the first iteration, you will traverse the entire node to find out that, okay, there are 600 nodes in this linked list because you only have the head pointer, right? And then what you will do, you will divide 600 by two, get the middle element, start again from the beginning and then traverse 300 times to reach at the middle node, right? So certainly, there should be some faster way to approach this problem. To understand this faster way, first of all, let me tell you a very easy example. Let us say I have this small car with me that is going at a speed of 50 km per hour. Okay. And then I have a sports car with me that is racy enough and it is going at a speed of 100 km per hour. Cool. Now let us say that they are both starting from the same point. Correct. Now, what happens is they start racing and they have the same speed. What will happen after a certain amount of time? If this car has traveled a distance x, then the bottom car will have traveled a distance 2x, right? So I can say that this is my fast car and this is the slow car, right? And no matter at what time interval you see, the distance traveled by the second car will be 
twice than the distance traveled by the first car, right? So I can say that if car one has completed a distance of one kilometer, then where is the slower car? The slower car will be at 500 meters, right? That is exactly half. That should give you some idea, right? Think like this. If the faster car has covered a distance of 5 kilometers, then where is the slower car? The slower car will be at a distance of 2.5 kilometers, correct? And that is again the half distance. So what we're going to do is we will apply this same concept to find out the middle node in our link list. So what do we do now? It's very simple actually. We have one pointer that is slow and we have one pointer that is fast. Now the speed of fast pointer is twice, right? So in every iteration, move the fast pointer two times and move the slow pointer only one time. So after one iteration, the fast pointer moves to the third node and the slow pointer moves to the second node. Correct? Let us do one more iteration. The fast pointer will move two nodes and the slow pointer will only move one node, right? Now watch closely. This fast pointer has reached the end, right? It cannot go any further. So what does that tell you? The slow pointer will be at the middle of the link list, right? So you can confidently say that 15 is your middle node, right? Now you might be thinking, what happens if the length of the link list is even, right? The case when you had two middle nodes. So once again, I'm taking my other example of link list and I will try to apply the same concept of the slow pointer and fast pointer. So here I have my slow pointer and this is the fast pointer. After one iteration, slow moves one step and the fast pointer moves two steps. Do this iteration again. The fast pointer moves two steps and the slow pointer will only move one step. Notice that we can do one more iteration. The fast pointer tries to move two steps and it reaches a null. That means the end, correct? And the slow pointer will only move one more step. So once again, what do you see over here? You can see that the slow pointer is at the middle of the link list and that is the second node, right? So this is how you can confidently and efficiently determine the middle of a link list. This algorithm is also known as the most famous hare and tortoise algorithm because the hare moves at a faster speed than the tortoise, right? So hare is moving at a 2x speed, whereas the tortoise is moving at half the speed, right? Now, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how all of this works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have a sample link list that is passed in as an input parameter to the function middle node. Notice that we only pass in the head as a parameter to the function, right? Because that is your source of truth. You can only go forward. You cannot go backwards, correct? Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available on my GitHub profile. Moving on with a dry run, what is the first thing that we do? We create two pointers. One is a slow pointer and the other is a fast pointer. Notice that both these pointers will point to the head because that is the starting point, correct? Now, what do you want to do? You run a while loop and you travel until the fast pointer either reaches the last node or it reaches the null value, correct? And what do we do in this loop? We move the slow pointer only one place by doing a slow pointer dot next and we move our fast pointer two nodes by doing fast pointer dot next dot next. So my fast pointer will point to the next and next node. So after one iteration, these pointers will look like this. This loop will continue again. My fast pointer will go at the last node and the slow pointer will be pointing at node number 15, correct? This is when the loop ends and you can simply return this slow pointer as your answer. The time complexity of this solution is actually order of n by 2, but we're gonna just say order of n and the space complexity of this solution is order of 1. That is because we do not take any extra space to determine the middle of the link list. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that finding out the middle element of any list is very important. If you look at it, this is the prime concept of how a divide and conquer algorithm works, right? You need to find a dividing point where you can separate your problem statement and then work upon two different cases, right? Similar is the case with arrays and similarly, 
you can also perform a binary search on a linked list. You can also perform all the divide and conquer algorithms on a linked list stru data structure as well. So finding this middle pointer in a fast and efficient way is really, really important. What other problems did you find where you can utilize this method to find the middle of a linked list? Can you find any other faster way to arrive at this middle pointer? What can you do about it? Think like this. If your linked list is sorted, then the middle element will tell you the median, right? Now try to think how you can find out the first quartile and how you can find out the 75th quartile. Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. Also tell me if you faced any problems while solving this question. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for your programming needs. You can find the link in the description below. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.